Well, that's me done about eight miles and it's pretty flat all the way from Mulgai. There's very little kind of up or down. It's just kind of long flat areas, flat stretches, should I say. And yeah, making good time. I've got another 10 miles to go to get to the campsite that I'm planning on staying at tonight. But just like this, it's a lot of kind of gates and then just straight trails. You really can't go wrong. And a day like today, it's just excellent walking. It really is. Nice to have a seat for a minute and just let the legs rest. I'm making good time, but the wind is starting to pick up and there's some rather large and dark clouds starting to appear. So far the weather is holding out. I've kind of cut across a field that you have to go across cut across a main road and then you come up the side of this woodland here and up ahead you might just see it's looking a bit ominous with the dark clouds so much for the weather <laughs> a little bit of hail there and as long as it isn't accompanied with uh, thunder and lightning Well folks, that little bump over there is Connick Hill. Now that is part of the West Highland Way. You can either do it or bypass it. Today I've decided to just bypass it and come down because I'm trying to get to Balmaha as quick as I can. I want to try and get something to eat there because I do have another serious walk along Loch Lomond to where the campsite is. I think today I'm going to end up doing maybe 21 or 22 miles so a trip up and over that right now isn't yeah isn't on the cards uh, i've done it in the past it's a great walk it's actually a nice spot to do a wild camp when you're doing the west island way because i'm sure double check but i'm sure it's out with the kind of warden boundary areas or the no camping zone so it's handy just to camp round about there and then head off along the side of loch lomond but yes, I need to get something to eat, big time. Some nice views from up here across uh, Loch Lomond. And the campsite's actually just along there on the right hand side and amongst the trees. Another maybe hour or so walking. But the weather's held off, it's still looking nice. A few midges appearing though, which I wasn't expecting. Now when I was in Balmaha I did manage to get a cheese and ham toasty and a can of juice. So that'll have to suffice until later. I was hoping to have something a little bit more substantial, shall we say. That'll do for now. We'll get barred on along there and hopefully get a tent set up fairly soon. Oh, you see that? See the water spout? I wasn't sure what that was there for a second.
Well that's the notch set up for tonight. Uh, campsite's getting quite busy. Just get some dilute juice ready as well for later on. If I get thirsty. And really it's just time to get the stove on the go. And I have a summit to eat to try, which is a pasta bolognese. I'm going to give this a go for tonight. Now what I have done is, in another video I showed this, is I've taken the main meals out of these packets and vacuum sealed them to make them a bit smaller for carrying. But it's basically the same stuff, uh, summit to eat. So there's lots of different flavours here, so I'm going to give this one a go. Pass the bolognese, I'll have that tonight and we'll see what it's like. Yeah, and I think that's the rain on now as well. Tremendous. Just remember to take the oxygen absorber out. At least in these ones you also get a fill line which is round about a D, I think. The only problem I've got is I can't read the writing on the back without my glasses. Yeah, I'll suss out. I just get stuff ready for charging. This uh, Summit to Eat meal, this pasta bolognese, was actually very nice. And the thing I did notice was that the pasta did actually soften up a lot better than some others I've had. And it was tasty enough, very nice. Yeah, I'm keen to try the rest of them now. But I did get one of my graze bars out. These are quite nice as well. These uh, protein kind of bars, oats and rice I think's in it. So I'll have that with a coffee just now and then maybe go for a little bit of a wander before hitting the sack and calling it a night. I might need, uh, I might need some earplugs. Just staying out of the way. There's quite a few people turned up now. It's not, uh, yeah, I'm not a great fan of public campsites. <laughs> a lovely evening. Just some uh, heavy rain showers now and again. I think the temperatures tonight have to drop down to the minuses. And there was a good frost last night as well, so I'm expecting a frosty tent in the morning. Good morning and welcome to day two, day two of my West Highland section. It's seven o'clock in the morning and I've left the campsite kind of sharpish. I did sleep okay last night, it was a bit cold. Uh, yeah, that was okay. I woke up a few times but that's just normal when I'm out wild camping. But what didn't help was the people in the tent next to me, my god, they, they didn't have snore. You could even hear them when I was starting to get my kit away and have my breakfast bar. And today's challenge is to get to Ben Glass campsite. And it's right along the banks of the loch here, the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond. Yeah, had to get that in there. <laughs> but when you leave the when you leave the campsite, it's a bit of a steep pool coming up the hill, but there are steps, so it's not too hard. And then it's a really nice trail coming down through the woodland. I really enjoyed that. Uh, the wildflowers and everything, quite beautiful. And as you leave here and we head along, it's a bit of a yeah, it's kind of just rough track, you're kind of climbing over trees and boulders and up and down, up and down. But it's nothing too difficult. Uh, it does take a while and it can, yeah, it can pound on the legs. And, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that side of it. But it's certainly picturesque. Now, the rain's been on and off, a bit drizzly. And I just hope it doesn't come to anything more. Matter of fact, I'm hoping it might clear up later and be nice and dry. 
But Ben Glass campsite is the, the aim of today. And once we get there, hopefully, get something substantial to eat as well. Right, we're heading down to the trail which goes along the edge of the loch. This bit's actually quite fun, I enjoy it, and the weather's improving, which is a bonus. Now, across the other side of the loch, the hills there, are the Arica Alps. There's a lot of Munros over there which I have climbed and done a bit of wild camping at as well. Matter of fact, talking of mountains, you pass the entrance or the car park on the start for Ben Lomond and it was absolutely mobbed this morning and that was only about half past seven. Matter of fact, there was a police car actually past me so they must have been checking for people illegally parking on the verge. Yeah, what a state of affairs. But anyway, nice to get this section done because then you know you're on the home street for the campsite. Well, after 10 miles coming along there, that is a sight for sore eyes. I'm really just about, well, I have to get to the end of the loch there, and that's where the campsite is, Ben Glass. But look at the mountains with the clouds just now. Absolutely incredible. It's beautiful when you're out walking and you get views like that out here in Scotland, it's lovely. When you get to this little bridge, then you know the ordeal is over with that walk around there. Wow, I really struggled with that. That's, uh, that's a bit hard going. Not used to it. But anyway, not far now to the campsite. Then again, maybe it's not the end. Not yet. That's a meal settled for the evening. I managed to have a hamburger there, which was fantastic. I think it was the first solid food I've had in about two days. So really nice to yeah, be able to stop and have something substantial. And I think I'm just going to do a bit of admin and call it a night for this one. Now, I need to have a shout out for Robin, or Walk With Wallace, because I've seen on social media that he managed to do the Cape Raft Trail in 15 days. So well done to him. It's not an easy undertaking, as you know, with me trying it. So I'm chuffed for him. But that's it for, yeah, kind of into day two of the West Highland Way. And tomorrow we're heading off towards the Bridge of Orkey. Good morning folks from the Benglass campsite and this is the bar area they've set up and yeah, it was really nice last night having a hamburger and a pint of beer. I was going to just set up my stove and cook my porridge for the morning but to be honest I think I'll just get battered on. It's quite a long walk to the Bridge of Orkey and halfway along the route you kind of pass the is it the Green Green Welly shop or stop? So I could possibly pop in there and have some lunch. I don't know. I maybe just stop and have a bite to eat in an hour or so. I'm still kind of bleary eyed. And it was cold last night, very cold. I could have done with my uh, my winter sleeping bag, I think. Oof. But yeah, time to go, time to get battered on.
If you are lucky enough to get good weather on the West Highland Way, even if it's a bit cloudy like today, you've still got fantastic views of all the mountains. You've got the Munro in the distance there. To be honest, I can't remember what it's called. You've got the cloud rolling over the summit. And just all the way around, the views are just beautiful. Now, the track coming up here is fairly easy. To be honest, from now for the rest of it, I think it's actually quite easy going. The worst bit is the side of Loch Lomond. And from here to the Bridge of Orkney, it's pretty flat, but it's really quite open as well. So if the rain does come on or the wind picks up, then it can be a bit of a, a miserable walk. But a lovely morning. Just you can hear the birds and that all round. You can hear a cuckoo away in the distance. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Just stopping to have a go ahead yogurt break for my breakfast. I'm going to have this and I've got a, another one for when I'm walking along and hopefully that will see me through to the green welly stop. Somebody's house here has had a near, a near calamity with the the river bursting its banks as such. Must have been a hell of a storm. As you cut through here, or this farm, you actually pass Ben Moore and stop in in to the Munros. In fact, there's another one on the right there, can't remember the name. I actually spent the night up at the back of there when I was with uh, Scotland's Mountains when we had our windy wild camp. That was over the back of there. But it's still plenty of snow up the tops. That's me leaving the hustle and the bustle of Tindrum, or Tindrum Services. I decided to stop off at the Green Welly and grab something to eat. I should have known better, to be honest. Uh, there's a nice restaurant before it. There's a new one opened up, uh, an American diner, and there's also a snack place. And I don't know why I went in there, because I knew it was going to be expensive, and I got a hamburger macaroni pie and some coca-cola and it was nearly 13 pounds <laughs> i'd even better go to a restaurant so i do not recommend the green welly but it was really busy as well with uh, you know cars and motorbikes and yeah, people touring about so i'm glad to get away from that rabble shall we say but up ahead is ben drain and now you kind of follow the railway track all the way along towards the bridge of orkey where I'm going to be camped for tonight, and yes, it's a bit of a trek.
before I break off on this rather long stretch of track we're nearly at the bridge of Orkey but the mountain in front in the middle I just thought I'd share that was one or the one I was on doing a wild camp on just before lockdown I think that was my last wild camp was the summit of up there a really nice one it was as well but yeah the clouds are looking ominous it was forecast for tomorrow to be a bit biblical I'm uh, concerned what's coming in later tonight now I'm heading to the bridge of Orkey we'll be there in a minute well I'll be a minute for you but I might actually try and go a bit further round and camp somewhere else but we'll see we'll see how the time goes because it's yeah it's getting late already The Bridge of Orkey Hotel at last. Now, yeah, you can stay there, or like a lot of people, they'll go down towards the bridge where I'm going in a second. And sometimes you can camp there. It depends if somebody's beat you to the spots. But the beer tent right now. <laughs> yeah, that looks really enticing. Here's the bridge, <laughs> just after the hotel. You've actually got these new picnic benches being put in. You can see where there's a few fire scars where people have been having campfires as well. So you can camp here and then just nip up to the pub if you want. I'm going to try and head further round to the other spot and another pub. And hopefully there's nobody else there. I think that's going to be it for today folks, uh, 24 miles today and then I managed to nip in to the Inveroran Hotel just before it's shut and get myself a burger and a pint so a little bit of admin to do and then that's it into day 4 and let's see how far we get but it's certainly getting colder and yeah, we'll see what happens with this weather during the night Now this is day four, or the start of day four of my West Highland Way backpacking trip and I've just left the Bridge of Orkey and I've started walking along what is known as the Parliamentary Road I think it was built in 1803 and I'm heading towards Kinloch Eden, which is a fair trek today the ski centre yeah not a good few miles anyway I'm just trying to dodge the weather that's coming it's coming in fast now I just want to try and get as much distance as I can now before we move on though just across the bridge here this little hill that's the one I've camped on as well when I done the, when I was doing the plaque cleaning or the cleaning of the memorial it's just over there, that summit. Lovely area this, but it's so remote, honestly, Rannoch Moor. Now this is May and it's freezing cold and there's still snow on some of the peaks here. Yeah, it's bitterly cold. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually get snow in a little while rather than rain.
on the home stretch now to the ski centre. And you've got the Buchel, Buchlet of Moor in front there, shrouded in cloud. Matter of fact, the Munro's at the back there as well, where the Devil's Staircase is, kind of in the middle. They've had a dusting of snow. I'm really just kind of skirting round this weather front. But hopefully once I get to the ski centre, if I can get something to eat there, at least they'll let me get my waterproofs and everything on and prepped, gauge what's going to happen. And then, yeah, batter on through. Because basically you're going to head across to the right to the King's House Hotel and then round the side of the road and then up to the mountains in the middle, up to the right and over the back to Kinloch Leaven. Not that far, really. <laughs> and I'm just going to get the rest of my waterproofs on for the hike out of here and then up towards the Devil's Staircase. Trying to snow now. <laughs> We're getting to that height where the rain's turning to snow. Oh, gee whiz. Absolutely ringing. Hey, right, let's go off of here. Well, folks, I decided to bail. <laughs> well, not quite. I was coming into Kinloch Leaven and I was going to camp at the campsite just outside this kind of hobbit hut. And just pitch there but when I was in paying it was only an extra £30 to get this heated shelter for the evening and considering what I've just been through yeah I had to do it it was a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned I've got all my kit here kind of semi-drying but they do have a drying room as well and I did go and grab some food from a local shop I've had it in a little microwave here so I've had something nice-ish to eat for my supper now, coming up and over the Devil's Staircase and, in, and then down into Kinloch Leaven was just an absolute nightmare. That's some of the worst weather I've walked in in a long time. It was 45, 50 mile an hour gusts, sleet, snow, horizontal rain, everything. And yeah, it did prove to be a bit challenging at times. And I did actually slip at one point and I've smashed my shin and it's still sore. But, yeah, what can you do? You've just got to grin and bear it when the weather's like that. And had I been somewhere else and I had to camp, I would have been fine. All my stuff was in dry bags, so all my stuff that was in my rucksack's fine. And I would have a dry set of clothes to put on when I was in the tent. But, yeah, what a challenge that's been. Now, coming from the Bridge of Orkey, to Kinloch Leaven was about 20 miles and I just finished at, or arrived here about half past four in the evening. So yeah, it's been a, a long hard day again. I just couldn't get over the weather and I hope tomorrow is going to be a lot better. And that's really the last stage of the West Highland Way where I head out to Fort William to the campsite in Glen Nevis. That'll be my last camp of the West Highland Way there. And yeah, we'll see what happens.
Good morning, I'm back on the trail again. It is day five and I'm heading to Fort William. I've just left the centre of Kinloch Leaven and you pick up this trail here which then takes you up and over the mountains and through a bit of forest and then into Fort William itself. I think at one point there's actually some really nice views of Ben Nevis but going by the weather I don't think we'll see it. It's just been really wild and the forecast today is to be a bit wild as well. We'll see how it goes hence the waterproofs. I'm looking forward to it. Well there we have it, Kinloch Leaven. And a nice walk this morning to get warmed up. Up this track here, up the side of the mountain. And it's going to take us up and over the back of the camera. And onwards. But look at the snow on the mountains, it's absolutely stunning. I love it when it's like that with a little dusting on the top. But heading back over, it looks like there's been a bit more snow that way. And this is actually the Memoirs in the mountain range. Done a lot of wild camping here in the past as well. Beautiful area, really nice. And if the cloud just stays as it is without any rain or snow, it would just be perfect to finish off the trip. We're on the home stretch now, and I'll give you three guesses what mountain that is. Just a windy road to go. This used to be the old end point. This is the one that I remember years ago. But they've moved it now onto the high street. I think it's just to get people along there to do a bit of shopping. But at least when you're along there you can grab a well-earned beer. All done. But when it comes to the West Highland Way, it's a fantastic walk and if you haven't done anything like that, or if you've thought about doing the West Highland Way, I could thoroughly recommend it. The scenery is fantastic, as you'll have seen, and you don't need to backpack it like I did, or do it as fast as I did. Many take over seven days. You can use services now to take your rucksack to the campsite for you, so you don't have to carry that. So you can make it as easy, or as hard, as you want. But you can just get out there and enjoy what Scotland has to offer and at times it's just breathtaking and you'll love every minute of it. So if you've never done it before and you're thinking about it, I really do recommend you give it a, give it a try. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed these videos and yeah, you've just enjoyed my little, my little donder out across the Highlands. And I'm going to just finish off like these little treats and stuff that I've bought. Yeah, I'm looking forward to tucking into some of this right now. But yeah, I'm going to get tucked into this. Thank you very much for watching. You might like this video that's up here coming up now. Maybe not. Maybe give me a thumbs up. Maybe not. And maybe subscribe even. That would be really nice and help the channel. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, take care.